Hello everybody, welcome back to Thieges Notebook Review. Pretty much what I do here is I review the most interesting notebooks to come through the PC market. And what I have for you today is from... Acer! This is the Aspire V3 551G. This particular notebook has AMD's latest APU in them, the A10-4600M, mated to the Radeon 7670M GPU with 2GB of DDR3 VRAM. Now what we're going to find out in this video is whether or not he has any improved performance over AMD's mainstream dual GPU solution from last year. Stick around. Acer is the well-known Taiwanese hardware manufacturer that recently had a rough 2011. Let's see if this Aspire V3 is a good reason for Acer to stick around for at least a little while longer. Focused as an all-around entertainer, the V3 comes packaged in the typical, generic-looking Acer box, which has changed very little over the years for Acer's more broadly aimed notebook devices. Included in the box is a user manual for the notebook and a tip sheet for using Windows 8. Not present would be a driver's disk and recovery media, which shouldn't surprise you coming from Acer. The power adapter is small and light, with a much longer than average cord length. The notebook itself is wrapped in a thin cotton sleeve, much better than the plastic sleeves previous Acer notebooks have been wrapped in. This then is the Acer Aspire V3 551G. This particular model houses AMD's latest APU, the A10-4600M, which uses a 2.3GHz CPU and the 7660G GPU simultaneously. What should really get your gears going is the addition of a second, dedicated GPU in this notebook, the Radeon 7670M. If you can recall, I previously reviewed a different but similar GPU setup in the HP DV6 last year. We'll see if AMD has improved on this kind of architecture over the course of the year. Other specs include 6 gigs of DDR3 RAM, a 750 gigabyte 5400 RPM hard drive, all stuck in a box with a 15.6 inch 720p screen mounted on top. The 551G comes with a standard 6 cell battery. It's a typical 6 cell that will power the notebook for about 2 hours of working use and 45 minutes of gaming use. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the front is the card reader and some indication lights. On the right we have two USB 2.0 ports, the DVD-RW drive, and a lock slot. There's nothing on the back, and on the right we get the DC in, LAN, the vent, VGA, HDMI, a USB 3.0 port for a total of three USBs, and mic and headphones in. The top of the Aspire V3 is a black mirror with an embedded Chrome Acer logo. Only two screws hold the bottom cover on, where underneath we can see that the memory, generic Wi-Fi, and Western Digital hard drive are all user serviceable. It's worth it to note, first of all, that the battery switch requires something like a screwdriver to push over, and there's no serial number displayed on the Windows 8 sticker. The 720p screen on this Acer notebook is not unlike the other Acer monitors I've seen. It has a narrow viewing angle and average color reproduction. What's better this time around is that the screen tilts back almost 180 degrees, making it very easy to find a comfortable viewing angle on your lap. The keyboard on this Acer is about as nice as you can find for the price range. My quick, light typing style had little trouble translating my thoughts into text. However, there were a few missing keystrokes, and some quick presses went unregistered during gameplay. The numpad gives us graciously large zero, enter, and plus keys, mimicking that of a desktop numpad. The touchpad response is by no means finicky and is not overly sensitive. The scroll area is also raised for easy locating. However, the buttons are a unibutton with a very large dead center and demands to be pressed at the polar opposites of the key. It will take some getting used to. Fortunately, it still can be disabled via hotkey. This way, if you don't use it, it won't get dirty. Because it does get dirty. Just like the rest of the notebook, which is covered in gloss on all surfaces. If you don't like seeing your notebook smudged, it would be worth it to invest in nitrile exam gloves by the bulk. If you absolutely need to hear something, the speakers inside the 551G will allow you to hear it. If you want to hear something, use headphones or external speakers, if you know what I mean. At least this Acer notebook has two speakers. Acer has also graciously included trial antivirus software that now has the ugliest big windowed pop-ups known to man. 
Plus, with the new Metro style of Windows 8, Acer thought it best to migrate most of its bloatware apps to the Live Tiles desktop, where they take up just about half of the initial real estate. No wonder Acer can keep its notebook prices so competitive. Also, this makes me wonder just how in hell they're still losing money. On to gaming. This is mostly what the 551G was built for. Screw basic entertainment, dual GPU solutions have historically been suited purely for gaming environments. So does it deliver? Yes, it does. Competitive gameplay in newer titles like Black Ops 2 is possible, albeit at the lowest possible settings at native res, but that's a big step up from last year's performance. Games that like dual GPU configurations will run much more smoothly on this notebook, like Batman or Diablo 3. The included 5400 RPM hard drive doesn't help out much with load times and texture loading, but that's to be expected. You should want to upgrade to a 7200 RPM hard drive, or better yet, an SSD, if you want a higher quality gaming experience. Under load, the Acer will never be uncomfortably warm on the handrest or the underside, even when utilizing both GPUs. Also, the total system response time I felt was a tad sluggish, but again, that's due to the 5400 RPM hard drive. At least the A10 delivers a smooth web browsing experience this time around, unlike its weaker siblings. In conclusion, students get a thumbs up. It has a standard numpad, it's light enough for the shoulder, and the keyboard and touchpad are silent enough for the classroom. You'll run into trouble with the battery life, but that's why you spend way more on a similarly equipped Ultrabook. For casual gamers, this notebook is a steal at its current price, and you can play any game on the market right now at native res at about medium detail settings. This notebook is too cheap and slow for the competitive gaming crowd, and desktop replacement users will be better off with a notebook that has a faster hard drive. Business users will be driven mad with all the fingerprints this notebook will accumulate, and you will never impress coworkers or clients with its appearance, unless you're a surgeon and constantly wear those nifty little gloves. Other than that, Forget it. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching my feature presentation of the Acer Aspire V3551G Casual Gaming Notebook. Please do rate, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And now, stay tuned for video game footage of the Acer Aspire V3 Casual Gaming Notebook, and you guys, have a good night. Clothes are still around